Hey guys, it's Michael here. This tutorial is going to cover on how to set up your own e-commerce web shop with Bricks Builder. So basically, I've already created one to give you a bit of an idea of what you can actually accomplish. So I'll just scroll through and give you a bit of a look at it. So we've got our normal hero and then we go into our trending products. So we've got a few trending products there and we've got some mini call to actions that will segregate to two different areas. And then your latest products, then kind of like a, another call to action to another part of the shop. And then it refines down into actual areas like niche categories within the shop. Now, this is actually a website that I built in Elementor for a client of mine. However, I wanted to see now that the Bricks update is out for WooCommerce, if I could accomplish it. Now, I was quite surprised. I did accomplish it, and it's pretty much a spitting image of the original, minus a few details here and there, like the paw prints in the background and whatnot. So what I'll do is I'll dive straight in. So now you've seen the site, I'll, I'll break it down. So I should be able to exit this. And I'm going to start on a clean palette. So as you can see it being built directly from the start. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come into bricks and I'm going to go into templates and I'm going to go add new. And I'm going to call this the uh, product uh, archives. So basically we're making your inner pages. So this will be where all the products are going to fall into and the search is going to come through for the products. So We'll create that and now we'll go straight in. Okay, so I haven't set up anything or anything like that. So first things first, what I usually do is I come up into settings. I'll come straight into theme styler and I'll create one. So we're just going to give this one an e-com. Just going to hit create. Now we're going to set conditions. We're going to go entire website because we want it to go everywhere. Then we're going to come down to general in my original one so i'm probably just going to use these base colors here instead of remaking colors so you could i usually don't like to go a white background unless there's a reason but lately i haven't been so i'm just going to set a bit of bit gray to just break it up and i might make that a little bit uh, lighter bring the tone up here uh, probably leave it there we probably don't need to change anything in the hue this will be good enough now, what I usually do is I'll set the container width to 100%. And then I'll come down to, so we'll just close off general. I'll come down to my um, type and I'll set my uh, body font. So I'm probably gonna go with 14 on this. I'm gonna set it to a kind of like a darker brown, I mean black here. I'm gonna set this to Poppins because it's my favorite font that I like working with. I'm probably gonna set the body font to 400 and we're not gonna worry about anything else. Then under here, I'm probably just gonna set this to Poppins. This is your headings for all headings across the site. And I'll probably set this one to 600. So that's basically all I, I get. To, I'm just getting a bit of the basis done so it makes it easier in the long run. Now I'll come into buttons because buttons are important to have preset. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set this to 14. We're gonna make the text white. So that's nearly white. So we'll just make that white. I'll actually save that in there. So we've got a white color. Now the background of the button, we're just gonna make this uh, orange. It stands nice, stands out a lot. So we're not gonna worry about the other components because it's basically, we just wanna get the default styling for the button. So the main color, the type and the text color on the button. So. You can put a border and a shadow if you want, that's up to you. Now, the last thing I do is right down the bottom here, we've got a new new widget area, I suppose in the theme style, it's called WooCommerce button. I'm gonna open this up, I'm gonna go into the text. I'm gonna set this to 14. I'm gonna change this to orange is actually white because this is our text. We're gonna change the font family to Poppins. I'm pretty sure it'll pull from the main font families, but I, I like to have these preset. My um, 600 for these buttons, because I like my buttons being at 600. I don't know if I set it on the other one. I'll have a check in a second. And we're going to leave it as normal. And we're going to set the letter spacing to one. Just breaks it up a little bit better. And now under the background color, I'm going to change this over to the orange. 
and we're going to leave it at that. So before I jump out of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on our hover theme styles and I'm going to come down to the buttons again. I'm going to change the background colors to a different color. So I'm going to make these purple. It's, it's going to look a bit funky, but actually let's not make it purple because it's just going to look a bit funky. We'll make it the lighter orange. I think that'll suit it well. And we'll come all the way down the bottom here as well. And we'll change the uh, button to the light orange. So now we've set up like our two base plates for two buttons here. So the backgrounds change. And remember to come out of hover styles. Because if you stay in hover styles, what's going to happen is you'll design your theme in hover and it just messes things up. So we don't want that. Now you probably should set up your link. You can set up your content. Like there's a lot of things that you can set up in here. But this tutorial is not going to cover that. So I'm going to jump straight into here, as you can see, because we're in the actual product archive, we've got all these different options here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a container. So now I've made this container. I'm going to, it's already set to my um, pre-measurements, but for safety, I always come in and just set it to 100%. Now I always put 25 on the uh, padding on the outside. It just, um, it's good for mobile when it goes into responsive mode. And what I'll do is I'm just going to label this root. So I know which is which. There's not very many containers to this one. So which is good. So we're going to come back into the elements. We're on the root container. We're going to chuck another container inside it. So we'll just actually, we're going to put probably two containers here just to break it up. So you've got your header area and then you've got your like uh filters and side well sidebar for your filters and then your products so we'll get another container and just chuck that in as well so we've got two containers they're center aligned which is not they're not actually center aligned so as soon as i put 1200 i'm just going to double check that whoa that's 12,000. so we've got 1200 by default i'm going to set it to center align yeah see there we go Gonna change the other one to center align as well. Put this one to 1200. Now we're not really gonna muck around with other settings because we don't really need to, not yet anyway. Now I'm gonna jump back to the root container and I'm gonna put 100 at the top and 100 at the bottom. So that way we've got our padding between our header and our footer. Now we go back into the very first container. We're gonna call this the header so we know what it is. And the second one's gonna be like the product area. Just so we know where we are when we're making even though there's not many it's still easy to just know so on the header area we're just going to drop in our header and what we're going to do is we're going to come over to click on your header i find it easier to click on the side here on the uh, right hand under the structure and then we're going to go to content and instead of typing it in we're actually going to click on select dynamic um, dat we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom i believe it is and we're going to select product categories. So what this will do is we don't have to, what we have to do is um, delete out that part. So it might be easy to delete the word first before you enter the dat. You can put more words there if you want, if you want a stagnant one. But yeah, what we're doing is we're just creating the um, dynamic dat. It'll pull from your categories depending on which page it's on, if that makes sense. So now that we've put that in, I usually come over to the style tab, I'll come down to typograph. I'll go, okay, I want to set this font to black, even though it's preset. And I'm going to make this like a 65. Actually, that's probably too big. 55, 45, 45. So you got to remember that's roughly about the size. We don't have to worry about anything else. So that's going to pull the information across. Now we're going to go back into elements. We're going to go breadcrumbs. It drops in the wrong spot, just drag it up. Now we've got our bread comes. It's not gonna show the full URL, so it'll have home. You can change that to whatever you want and you've got your options for your separator and you can or an icon. So there's styling options here. You can put on before and after prefix and suffix. And um, you can style it up through here if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it with the default. So that's pretty much that container done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click back on the header up here. I'm gonna go over to layout because now that we're creating a section below it, 
we want to have a bit of margins or padding between it. So usually I'll try and stick to padding and we'll put about 50 to keep consistency. And before we jump out of this container, we're just gonna go back to content and I'm gonna make everything between the row, gra uh, the row gaps 25. So I've got my 25 row gap and I've got my padding between containers of 50. So now we're gonna jump down to the product area. Now this one's gonna be done a little bit differently. So we're just gonna click on this pencil here and we're gonna change this to horizontal. And now we're just gonna quickly add two containers. So we've got two inner containers here. So one of them's gonna be for the sidebar and the other one's gonna be for the product. So we'll create the uh, sidebar first. So we'll just call this one sidebar and I'll call this one products. So we've got our sidebar. We're gonna make it vertical and we'll just leave these for the time being. Actually, we might just put our 25 in now because we want everything to be 25. And we're gonna come over to the style layout and we're gonna set this to 50%. Actually, no, we're gonna set it to about 20%. Yeah, 20% is good. <clears throat> so now that we've created that, we're gonna come back over to the elements. I'm just gonna click the plus sign here. And we're going to grab our filters. So we're going to put in a product filter. So we're just going to click on the product filter, go over to content, click on filters, add item, and we're going to add a text manual. So there's a lot of different options. And I, depending on what type of store you are, you won't need half the options, but for a basic generic store, which is what we're making at the moment, I'm just going to put in the uh, product categories to show you what it's like. And then we want it to be a radio list. So when they click on any or pet food, because I've only got like a two, two lists, I should probably add a few more so you can see it in full length. So we've got our two lists here. Now, something that you should do is keep it uh, kind of closed in a sense. So just to give you an idea, if we were to jump onto mobile and we didn't have it collapsed, It'd start like this. Now, if you've got about 50 categories in there, it's going to just branch out and yeah, it's just keep it closed. And we're going to rename it too. So we're going to go filter title and we're just going to call it categories. So we kind of got what we're doing here. Before I move on out of the sidebar, you can style this up to however you want, but we're just going to keep it nice and simple. You got your, uh, title options here you can kind of style up where the title is you can't really style too much on the filters part of it but uh it's pulling from your theme style so it's pretty all right so we'll just jump back onto the sidebar here i'm going to come over to style layout i'm going to go okay we want this to be 25 padding from the uh right hand side because we're going to actually put 25 on the products as well so it'll equal 50 same as this one here you can put 50 in this one, but I'm just going to leave it at 25 because I want a bit of room. Just in case you have a category that's a bit longer of a name. Now we'll jump over to the um, other container. So originally we set this container to 20%. So we're going to set the product container now to 80%. So now we've got our product container and we're going to jump straight into elements again. And we're going to add products. So you'll notice by default, it's grabbed my ugly button that I created and it's kind of just formulated, well, just kind of like throwing everything down. There isn't really much styling to it. So we'll jump into the products and we'll come over to the content tab. So under here, you've got your query. So query is basically where it's, what data it's going to be pulling in. So you can go through here, set it to whatever you want. There's quite a few options, as you can see. I'm just going to leave it all on default because we're not actually changing anything at the moment. So you can include if you want to, and yeah, I just thought I'd show you that, but you can set it to a category. Just say your base one's called all categories. Oh yeah, and products per page. So just say you wanna have four rows, um, but for demo purposes, we're gonna set eight. So it only shows eight out of my 10 products that I have added. So now we're gonna jump down to layout. I'm gonna skip build and come back to it actually. So we're gonna come down to layout. You know, you've got a mount, amount of columns so you can set this to five four however many you want i recommend four for desktops if you've got a sidebar if you have no sidebar go five and we want to change the gap to 25 
because we're using the gap 25 between our like assets inside the containers, you want to keep that consistency. So now that we've got the 25 gap, it'll be the same as everywhere else. So we've got the 25 in, you can come down to um, the widgets here. So you've got your before and after where you can put in like your results, your order. Yeah. Yeah. You get the drift of it. So I, <clears throat> I'll just put this in here, the pigeonation. So we've got it down the bottom here and you can sort it by however you want here as well. So you can style this up. So what I'll do is I'll just turn that off for the time being and I'll come across here and I'll just click on this one here. Now you'll notice you can't actually see it. Don't worry. If you, once you look on the live site, you can actually see it, but in here you can actually style it up. So you can put it to center and you can change a few of the defaults here and you can come into here and change the typo. But for some reason, it just doesn't seem to want to show up whenever I'm trying to make something with it. So for demo purposes, we'll just turn that off and we will turn it on in through here under the content and widgets and we'll go show after content just so we've got a bit of navigation to change pages now i'll go back up to i think we've yep we've covered layout we'll go to fields again so under fields here you've got your uh, product image then you've got your title then you've got your price and then you add to cart so what we're going to do here we're going to jump in and we're going to go okay we want to center align it, for example. We'll just click on here on the uh, text um, topograph, set align to center. So it'll align your text to center. And usually with text like this, I'll bring down to about 14. And I won't bother changing the color because we want to keep it consistent. And we'll leave it pretty much how it is. And I'll come down to price. Same again, we'll jump on the topograph here. We'll set the uh, pixel size to probably about 16. I tend to like my uh, price one a little bit bigger. You can set it smaller. You can do vice versa. So actually, no, we'll just keep it 14, the same as the other one. And you can change the color of it. It's up to you, but honestly, don't mind it this way. I think it looks fine. Now the add to cart button, we're going to come into here again. Actually, I forgot to do one last thing on the price here. We're going to set the alignment to center. So it center aligns it. I prefer center align. Looks neater. Under the cart button, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to leave. Actually, no, we're going to put this to 12. Don't know if it's going to override it, but because we've already got button attributes done. And I'll just give it a shot. So we're going to center align that. So let's see. No, it's not going to override it. That's fine. We'll just close that. So we've got basically our basic parts done. Now we're going to add an extra field which is going to be the category. So I'm just going to delete this out. Make sure you delete it out first, because as soon as you, if you add another um, dynamic dat, it's going to keep the old one there as well. So you'll have double up on the images. So we're just going to click on the dynamic dat here. We're going to scroll right down to the bottom and we're going to go product category. And I'm pretty sure my product categories are over the top. No, nope. we just got pet food, cool. So we're just going to leave that with the family font the way it is. We're going to do text align center. So we've got it in the center. We're going to probably put this to 12 because you don't really need it to be big. And I'm going to set the color to like kind of a gray color. So it's grayed out. Probably not the best how I've got it here, but for demo purposes, I think we can survive. Now I'm just going to minimize that and I'm going to drag it up and I'm probably going to put it above the title. So we've got our product terms here. Now it hasn't updated. So I'm just going to click save here and I'm just going to refresh that so it's updated. <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, we've got it now under our image where our image box is. We've got pet food. Now, something you can do is under the fields here, for example, you've got your margins here. So we can probably put that at 10. 10's maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, we'll just set it to 10 on both top and bottom. Actually, no, we'll leave bottom. We'll just set it to 5. So we could probably go through and style these all up, to be honest. So top, we'll just make that five. We'll just leave them all at five, to be honest. So we won't worry about the car. Actually, we will just keep it like that. Now, you'll notice how there's no real options to style the container. 
So what I've done is I'll just grab the code off my other screen quickly and show you what I've done. So what we wanna do is we just wanna save this up. I'm gonna open up a new tab with the actual dashboard again. So under bricks, you've got your uh, settings. So go to your dashboard, click bricks, go to settings, and then come over to custom code. So we're gonna work on this container right here. Now, I've already gone through and grabbed all the CSS classes for the things that I wanna do. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it in and explain it to you. And I'll include that in the uh, video's description below. So you've got a copy of all this. So I'm gonna expand that so you can see it. So basically the repeater item is the container that this product is in. So now if we come into here, I've set the background color to white, put some padding on it, put the border on it, made it the border style solid. I've given the border a color and I've made the radius. So we've got curved edges. So this is for my original site that you would have seen. And then I've created a hover here as well. So when you hover the product, you won't be able to see it here, but it'll, it'll bring a shadow up. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna go save. We're gonna save this as well. Now I don't think this will, nope, it won't update. So you're gonna have to refresh that just so it brings in the new DAP. So as you can see, we've now created a border around the outside. When I hover it, you can barely see it, but there's a subtle, subtle um, shadow. And yeah, we've kind of got like our container box now. So that, that's how you style your container box around it. So I'm pretty sure I put padding of 15, yep. So the padding will be around the image side here. So just keep wary of that when you're putting margins on these under the, um, where is it, fields here. Just be wary, if you put too many margins on there and then you put the padding on the boxes, it's gonna squash it down real, gonna be a bit intense. So now that we've created that, Pretty much that's done. You can go through and style it however you want. You know, you can make as many different styles and changes. Like I'll put a link to the, I'll just open this up in a new tab so we can see. Yeah, that should be grabbing the product term. I might check that because it's not functioning correct. Just give me a second. I'm just gonna open up my other screen, double check to make sure I've got the right I've done it correctly because I may have told you the wrong way of doing it. While we're waiting for my screen to load, what we're gonna do is something I like to do just to add a bit of flair. Let's come into here, add a separator. So we're gonna add it to the right. I'm gonna make it 100. I'm gonna make it 2px wide. I'm gonna make it 25 margin. You know, keep consistency. I'm gonna make it centered. Probably don't need to do anything here actually. And then you just wanna, I'm gonna go with dotted. I'm gonna add a color of go with the orange so you've got your color there give me a second yep i've done the right thing ah yes this is why it didn't load so under site settings one thing i forgot to do right at the start we've got your page settings so you don't really need to do anything in here then you've got your template settings so it'll self-populate we want to get rid of that we want to go conditions we want to go add conditions we want to go down to, where is it? The archives. And then we want to go categories and tags as well. And we can come down to all items in product. So you can go through here and you can keep setting it. So we're just going to leave it at the base one. And we're going to go and add another one. So that one's for your archives. This one here is going to be for our archives again, but we're going to go Actually, sorry, individual. Individual, we're gonna set this to the shop page. So now it's gonna override the internal. So under pages here, you've got your shop page, it'll override it now. So we'll just hit save on that. Now, pretty sure if I come into the main site here and I go down, visit store, there we go. So it just must be the preview, it doesn't show it properly. So you've got your pet food here. This is your, um, the category that this page is. You got your shop items, you got your little hover on the background, and then you've got your categories here. So the filter works pretty good. So I've kind of got every product in the filter, so it's not really gonna filter them out, but it, it doesn't change pages, which I'm pretty happy with. So that's pretty much how you create your um, 
shop page. Now you can style it up however you want. There's many ways that you can go about it. And that's just gonna come up, come back to you in a sense on how you wanna do it. But this is the basic understanding of how I would create a shop page and then I'd style it up from there depending on what type of theme I'd build. So let's click save on that again. I'm just gonna close that, close this. Now we're gonna come back into bricks. We're gonna go into templates. So we've got our product archives. We're gonna create a new one called, I'm gonna call it product. I'll try to keep it the same as what they do in here. So we're gonna call it um, product single. Even though it's single products, I'm gonna call it product single. We're gonna click publish. We're gonna click edit with bricks. So we've already got our theme style, so we don't have to remake it. So we've already done that before. Under page templates here, I'm gonna get rid of uh, probably populate content and I'm gonna set conditions. Mm. I don't think I need to set the conditions. I wanna test this first. So I'm just gonna, just give me a second, I'm thinking here. Um, archive products, no, we're just gonna leave this as it is. So I'm just gonna insert a new container. I call it root like I always do, so you know it's your root container. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not even gonna worry about putting 100%. I'm gonna add my inner element and we're gonna style this one up. So this one's going to be a horizontal because we want two new containers on the inside. So I'll just chuck those in. So I've got them in. We're gonna make this container um, 1200 pixels under the style tab. And I'm just gonna go back to the root container and put my usual 100, 25, 25, 100. So that way I've added my mobile. I've added my, um, so the right and left are for mobile, basically as a downsize for responsive and the top and bottom, you'll have to change. Usually I go from 100 to 50. Sometimes I'll do it more up, upwards of 200, depends on the design. And one last thing before we go across, you can set it here, I think it is. Which one is it? Okay, it's the third one. I always get these mixed up. They're new to me, I'm not used to it. So you can set it here or you can come down to the container and you can set it here as well. So you got your alignment container center. But I think it might be wise on your root container if you're building a long page, you can come through and preset it so every container will fall into that same axis. So this container here is just gonna be like the product. First container is gonna be the image. Second container is going to be the uh, content. So I've already pre-labeled them, I know what goes where. We'll jump into the image one We'll put a new element in. So we're going to come in here. As you can see, you've got all your different elements. We're going to click on our product gallery. So I haven't got any thumbnails, so I, I don't actually know what it looks like with thumbnails. So maybe at some point down the track over the next couple of days, I'll investigate it, see what it looks like. But for demo, we're just going to leave it as it is. So on the image container, now that we've got our image in here, I'm going to come over to the style tab. I'm going to come to layout and on the right hand side, I'm going to put 25 because we want 50 between each column here. I'm pretty sure I forgot to put the 25 on the last video on the, um, I mean the last area on the products page. So we've got 25 there. I'm just going to jump over to this one, go to the style tab and go to the left hand 25, just so I don't forget. And then I'm going to come back to the image one. So we've got our 25 that's come across. I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna change this to percent. I'm gonna set it to 50%. And I'm gonna come across to the content one. I'm gonna change that to percent, make it 50 as well. And then I'm gonna click on the image, not on there. Click on it here. We're gonna click on, I want it to align in the center, I suppose. You can choose your alignment because some images are gonna be small. So you might go stretch, but I'll be honest, I'll probably set it to center just so if the screen expands to that point. Usually doesn't, but yeah, just to be safe. Now we're gonna jump over to our content tab. We're gonna click on the plus. So make sure you click on it so you've got it highlighted. And we're just gonna drop in our next part. So I'll probably go and type in breadcrumbs because breadcrumbs are handy. Put our breadcrumbs in, put our title in, we'll put our price in. We'll put our short description, where is it? 
short description. You got your product stock, but I haven't got any stock turned on, so I don't have to worry about it. I've got a uh, product rating turn off. You can put the big description, which is your um, product content, and then you got your tabs as well, product additionals. It's There's quite a lot here that you can play around with, but usually for standard, I just go with the usual title, short description, photo, price, and where is it? Add to cart. And I'll probably chuck in the meta. So the product meta. So we've got that laid out. So we're gonna click back onto the content tab now. Go over to the content. I'm gonna set this to 25. So it's gonna push them all 25 apart. And then you can come through and style these however you want. But for purposes, I'm just gonna style up a few parts of it and leave the rest. So I'm gonna put the uh, title, style, text. I'm going to set the, where is it? Transform it to capitalize. So it's capitalized. I'm not right, worried about the size of it. And with the price here, I'm going to bring this up to probably about 55. Some people like it smaller. I like it big and thick in your face. So we've got 66 here. We, I mean, 55 with 600 weight. So here's your basic shop. Now, something you can do if you want to get it better aligned, you can come back up to your content tab here. Go over to the content. So content tab, well, structure, and then content tab here. And then you want to align it to the center, actually not that one, to the center axis. So this is the container. So you can align it so it lines up better, but I think it's fine along the top. Now I'm just going to close these up. So you've kind of got your style here. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the root container again. I'm going to click elements and I'm going to add a new container. And we'll start styling this container up. So I'm going to make it it's going to go vertical We're not, and container alignment is going to be center. We're going to go across the style layout. We're going to set that to 1200 and I'm going to put a margin of like a 50 from the top. I mean, padding, sorry. You could probably put a margin on this one. I don't think it'll really matter. So we'll just go 50 on the margin. Not 500, 50, just so there's a bit of gap between them so we can see it. Now, the only time you don't want to use margins is if you're putting a background in here and you want it to, yeah, go in that margin area so you'd use padding. So it's up to you which one you use. I bounce between them depending on what I'm doing at the time. But this one's going to be called Related Product. So under here, I'm going to probably just chuck in a title. So we'll put in a normal heading and then we're going to drop in the, where is it? Related Products. We've got Related Products here. As you can see, they have no styling to them. And I'll get into that in a minute. So for some reason, it won't grab the same styling as the shop. And I think that might be a bug. I'm not sure. But first, we'll come into actually related products, content. Let's set our um, padding row gaps to 25. And then we'll come back over to heading and we'll just change this to 55, uh, it's probably too big. We'll probably put it at 45. We'll make it uh, um, capitalized again. And we'll just come back over to the content tab. And I'll just keep the consistency with the divider I had before. We won't worry about that one. And we'll make it dotted again. And we'll just set it to the orange. I think we had a light orange. And we just I'm just going to give this a label of related products. Now, when you click on this here, for some reason it's not pulling across that styling that we put in before. So just let me check quickly on my other screen what I've done in that regard, because I don't think it should be bringing across that information, which it's not. I'm just going to hit save. I'm going to hit refresh just to make sure I didn't open things too soon or anything like that. Okay, so it's not pulling it across. Related products. Okay, so th this one's kind of holding its own. You'd have to style this up individually. I dare say it's got its own um, boxes here. So what we're going to do is just for purposes of the demo, I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to type in products because you don't really need to use related products in products. And we're just going to drag that into here. So we got that in. We're just going to go delete, get rid of that. So We've brought in our own product tab here. We're going to go into fields. We'll leave that as it is. Um, we'll come into here. We're going to set this to 
probably four. We're gonna come down to layout, probably set that to four, set this to 25, keep the consistency. Um, where else do we wanna do something? So let's have a look through here to see what we can do. You could set it to the category, but I don't know what you wanna do here. So yeah, if you wanna keep it as related products, you're gonna to have to go through and basically apply the CSS styling to this one as well. So we're not gonna worry about lining these up like I did before, cause you've already seen how that's done. So we're just gonna hit save on that. So we've kind of constructed our page. Now, depending on how, what information you want on there, you can go a little bit more all out and you can add some custom sections I honestly, I'd go research checkout pages on um, Dribbble or Pinterest and just find some designs you like the look of and just replicate them, you know, learn, understand. So we've done that. We're going to go back to the Bricks Builder, back to the dashboard, and we're going to go into pages now. So something I'm going to show you is um you can edit your cart page and your checkout page and your account page so the account page isn't too much worry you just edit with bricks but first what i do is i open up in a new tab i'll come into here i'll copy the short code because you want the short code so you copy that we'll go edit with bricks this is the cart page that we're about to design here so we're just going to drop a container in we're going to put another container inside of that and then we're going to drop in code and drop in a short code we're going to paste that short code into here so now it's going to say return to shop we're going to drop that into the container because apparently i didn't put it inside it like usual i'm going to call this one root this is the main container i'm actually going to drop a heading into that container and i'm going to call this uh ah quickly put my separator onto it just so we've got some styling there and I probably will bring up the text size to probably about 45 I think that's what I've kept on the others now I'm going to go back to this container here I'm going to go to style layout we're going to set it to 1200 and we're going to center align the container I'm going to click back on the root, go into style, layout. We're going to put 25 on the sides, 100 top to bottom. Just so we got that padding away from your header and footer, like I said before. Now, when you've got items in your car, what I'll do is I'll just go to the shop page, go visit store. And I'm just going to save this. So we've kind of just done a base layout. I'll just add some extra padding to the row layout, so 25. Now this is basically all you need to do for this page. So we'll just come across to here, we'll add a product. Now you'll notice this button, I'll go into this in a bit on how to configure it. So we'll go view cart, and you'll notice how this, it's got no styling on the buttons here. So I've gone ahead and styled all those buttons and I'll show you how I've done it. So we'll start with this here. So how to style this, you go back into your, this is why I left this open. We'll go into bricks, go into settings, we'll go into custom code, I'll just drag this down so I've got some more room. Okay, just make some space there. And what I'm gonna drag in now is basically just the button on the website. So you've got your button and then you've got your hover. So this is just copy and paste. The reason for important it overrides the uh, defaults that are on here at the moment. So on here, it's showing that we've done style the button, but on here, it's not. And I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, one would assume that it's going to bring this across, but it's not. So we'll just save this here. Sorry for flicking through the pages so quickly there. We'll come back over to the car. We'll just hit refresh. And now it's these are the colors that I had on the original site. So I'm just going to leave them in there. And if you've styled up the button, it will grab certain parts of the styling, surprising enough, just not the colors. So, dear say that's a bug. So th this is your design here and you can muck around. You've got little limitations. So you can put a background on here and, you know, put some 
border or shadow, whatever you want to do in that regard, but you don't really need to style up too much. It's And it's going to cascade pretty much fluently through the mobile version, I believe, on this one. So that's pretty much it for the card page. You, like I said, come in here, style it however you want. Now we're going to jump into the, we're going to go pages again. I'm just going to close both these down. Now we're going to edit the checkout page. Now the checkout page, before I go into detail, I better grab that code. So make sure you grab the short code because you're going to need it. Come into here. I'll do my same thing again. I'll just add the, whoops, we don't want two containers. I want to add a container inside the container and then put a code in. And then in there, we want to check our code. So before we even start styling, so it'll drop it in. That code we put in before with the CSS will actually come across to this form as well. So basically the same with the account page as well. So that's kind of handy. Now, I'm just going to hit save on that. And then I'm just going to come back up into here. I'm just going to add in a header. Drag that header and put it in the container and put this into the container as well. And change this one to 1200. Now you don't need to do exactly how I do things here. It's just a habit I've started to give myself here. Just so it makes it easier long run when I'm um, doing the mobile version and whatnot. So I know the root container is going to hold this certain part. This is going to hold that part. And I'll just style this up and we'll call it uh, check out. Add the separator again. It's nice and simple, nice and quick here because I've already got my browser pre-configured for it. Dotted, put the orange. And under typo, we're gonna set that to 45. It might be worth putting your um, header, all headers to start at 45, just to keep consistency throughout it. But I'm pretty sure it might affect these. You might have to check what CS tag they are. They're probably CS header two or header three, one of the two. Now you can come through and style this all up if you wanted to, just by grabbing it out of like, just going right click inspect and just grabbing the CSS for it. And one last thing before I move on, because I'm using actually container content 25. So once again, we got our 25 gap, just going to click save on that. And I'm going to jump back to here because something you'll notice is when you go over to mobile, this is the mobile form. It's kind of like squashed in. So what I've done is I've grabbed the CSS code for the form here and the CSS code for the review. That's like the review product area. So we'll go back into settings under custom code. I'll just drag this down again so we can see it. Drop that down. And basically I'm gonna chuck in two media queries. So when they go below into the mobile query, because the other ones don't really matter. You got your landscape seems to be fine. Your tablet seems to be fine and your desktop seems to be fine. It's just the uh, mobile version. So what I've done is this is going to call media query screen size. So I've set it same size as the mobile on here. And then it's going to call this function here well, this CSS class and it's going to go, okay, get rid of that margin that it had to the right, which was 2%. And it's going to set it to 100% width. And it's going to do the same with the reviews part. So if we save that, we come into here, we re refresh. We go over to mobile. You'll notice how the forms come in. So now it's all laying out nicely and it's got rid of that 2% margin on the top part here. So I'll include that all of this CSS in the description. So you've got a copy of it, so you don't have to go through and find it yourself. And now I'm just gonna go back to one of the pages for another part of CSS that we're gonna add. So if we go back to, sorry, we're gonna have to go into bricks, go into templates. We're gonna go to um, archive products. We're gonna click edit with bricks. So when you click a product, you probably can't see it on here. I'll just go into the front view. Okay, it doesn't want to work there either. Yeah, here we are. 
you'll notice how it pulls up the button below it and there's no real way to style that. So what I've done is I've already grabbed the CSS for it and we're just gonna add it in CSS. So custom code again, drag it down, drop it in below. So basically the button's called add cart. I mean added cart. So we're not gonna worry about that one there. Get rid of that. So it's called added cart. You can add your own hover if you want to, but I didn't worry about it. And basically you've got to set these to important. I noticed when I didn't, it didn't pull this information across. So I got rid of the padding. I've got rid of the margins. I've kind of really narrowed it down. So now if I hit save on that, and we come back over to, we'll just close these checkouts down. Come back over to here and we just go refresh. We click on this here. You'll notice how this is the pink from the other website. And it's kind of shrunk it down. You can play around with that to put it however you want, I suppose. But um, things to keep in mind with this, I'll just give you an idea for people that are new. The important part is block. It'll drop it below. And the background color and the color of the text. So you don't have to worry about margins too much or the line height. You can, If you don't set them, it'll just uh, put more spacing there. That's all. So that, that's pretty much covering most of the areas on here in terms of um, your product shop. So you shouldn't be viewing it from this direction the way I've been doing it. So we'll come back into here, go visit site, and we've got our pet shop. So what we've done is we've created our page, we've changed a few of the background components that aren't yet in bricks, which I assume they will come in due time. So we can view our cart. We've done a bit of customization on the cart page here. We can proceed to checkout. We've got our checkout. We've done a little bit of customization here as well. If we go back, we can go into the product. We've got some basic functionality going on in here. Now you can set this so it's like the little magnifying glass so when you hover over it, it highlights up. And yeah, you, you set your basic functionality in here as well. So it's got all the components that you need to make a good looking website. You just got to go in and style it. So that, that's pretty much it. I think it's, I've kept this tutorial basic as possible for people who are trying to get into it. And just remember there's, these are the functions here that are going to help you style out the other areas. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a message on the community and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. And thanks for watching.